Hello, hello, beautiful family, fellow believers in Yeshua HaMashiach. Grace and truth be with you and yours. Today we're going to sharpen the sword of the Spirit. Remember, God gives us armor, right? And we need to use that armor. We need to put on the armor every single day. The helmet of salvation, because we have the minds of Christ. The breastplate of righteousness. Not our own righteousness, but His imputed righteousness unto us. The belt of truth. Why? Because He is the way, the only way, to the absolute truth that leads to eternal life. The way, the truth, and the life. And then what? We have to put on the sandals to stand firm. Stand firm and preach the message of salvation to this dying world. Fight the good fight and finish the race. And then what else? We don or put on the shield of faith to quench every fiery dart spear or missile that comes our way. The shield of faith can only... How can, how can we fortify the shield of faith? Through trials and affliction. And when we see the word of God being fulfilled and we give... <laughs> We say, wow, that must have been God. That can only have been God. That's Jesus Christ and his promises being fulfilled because I believe. Isn't that beautiful? And that's how your shield of faith is built up through affliction and trials. Remember, God, it is impossible to please God without faith. And you must believe that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. It's all from scripture. Everything I tell you is straight from scripture. It's not, I'm not making anything up. It's not man-made. I would never ever do that to anyone. Because I'm going to be held to a, a higher degree. I'm going, to, I'm going to be held more accountable because of these things that I'm telling you. So I want to make sure that it's the truth. Okay? Alright. So then... After the shield of faith, right? The only offensive weapon we have is what? The sword of the spirit. The sword of the spirit. It's a double-edged sword. Surgically sharp. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead on the third day. Right? Thus defeating death. Thus saying... Fulfilling prophecy, saying, Oh, death, where is thy victory? Oh, death, where is thy sting? Right? That's the same spirit that lives inside me and every born again believer. Everybody who believes in the gospel message of salvation receives. The Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, it's a He, it's not a force. Let's not get all Star Wars here. It's a, it's a He, okay? And He who started a good work in you will see it to completion on the day that Christ Jesus is revealed. Revealed to those who are eagerly waiting for Him. That's also a Bible verse. Guys, the rapture is going to happen. It's amazing. Right when I said that, I heard a ringing in my left ear. Listen, it's going to happen soon. And you need to be right with God. And spiritual warfare is off the hooks right now. It's intense. Very, very intense. And that's why we have to put on the full armor of God every single morning. Sometimes I forget. I forgot yesterday. And it wasn't a good day. You have to proclaim it. You have to speak it. Okay? Speak it out loud. Speak it in faith. Complete faith. You have to actually believe what you are saying. Otherwise, if, you're not, if you don't believe what you're saying, you're going to be tossed to and fro in the waves, in the, in the raging storm, in the trials of life. Do you understand that? That's where faith comes into play. 
And then we use our offensive weapon, the Sword of the Spirit, which we're going to get into right now. We are going to dwell into trust. Trust. Trust is so paramount. But first, I need to put on my reading glasses. Alrighty. Nah, just kidding. These are my reading glasses. I'll put on these these reading glasses. Okay. Okay, now, students, now, please uh, turn to page two. Page two in the uh, philosophy of human evolution. And we'll, we'll learn about where we were created. Mm-hmm. No, I'm just kidding around. All right, guys. Listen. Trust is the foundation for any relationship. We know that, right? When someone is truthful, we trust what they say. When someone is reliable, we trust them to finish what they started. When someone is strong, we trust them to protect us. Character and integrity are the building blocks of trust. You know, the more you see God fulfilling, because all of his promises are yes and amen. I've heard there's 7,000 promises in the scriptures. Every one of them is yes and amen. Whether it be good promises or promises about his wrath and his judgment, all his promises are yes and amen. So let's get into it. Let's sharpen our sword. The sword of the spirit. These are scriptures to help us trust, continue to build and trust in the God of Israel, the only one and true living God, Yahuwah, the maker of the heavens and the earth, of everything that is seen and unseen, who you were fearfully and made you were fearfully and wonderfully made in your mother's womb by him. Proverbs 3, 5, 6 states, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all of your ways acknowledge Him and He will make your path straight. Psalm 27 says, Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord, in the name of our Adonai, our Master, our God. Psalm 44 says, Blessed is the man who makes the Lord his trust, who does not turn to the proud, to those who go astray after a lie. Psalm 118.8 states, It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in man. Psalm 146.3 states, Put not your trust in princes, and a son of man in whom there is no salvation? Proverbs 11.28 states, Whoever trusts in his riches will fail, but the righteous will flourish like a green leaf. Proverbs 28.26 says, Whoever trusts in his own mind is a fool, but he who walks in wisdom will be delivered. That's why Solomon asked for wisdom above all things. And because of that, God gave him not only wisdom, but everything else on top of that. It says in the scriptures, if you ask for wisdom from God, he will give it to you. Ask and you shall receive. Knock and the door shall be open. Wisdom is so paramount, guys. It's so crucial especially in these end days. Isaiah 2.22 says, Stop regarding man in whose nostrils is breath, for of what account is he? Jeremiah 17.5 says, Thus says the Lord, Cursed is the man who trusts in man and makes flesh... I'm sorry, let me start that over. Jeremiah 17.5 says, Thus says the Lord, Cursed is the man who trusts in man and makes flesh his strength, whose heart 
turns away from the Lord. Psalm 37, 3 to 5 says, Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and befriend faithfulness. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in, in him, and he will act. Remember, the closer we draw to God, the closer he draws to us. The more we abide in him, the more he abides in us. Psalm 143, 8 says the following. Let me hear in the morning of your steadfast love, for in you I trust. Make me know the way I should go, for to you I lift up my soul. Proverbs 16.3 says, Commit your work to the Lord, and your plans will be established. Jeremiah 29.11 For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. Joshua 1.9 Have I not commanded you? That sounds like a command to me, right? Joshua 1.9 Joshua 1, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Psalm 56, 3-4 states, When I am afraid, I put my trust in you. In God, whose word I praise, in God I trust, I shall not be afraid. What can flesh do to me? Psalm 127 states the following. Wait a minute, guys. My battery's about to die. Stand by one. All right, I'm back from out of space. No, 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 no. All right, Psalm 56, 3 to 4 says, When I am afraid, I put my trust in you, in God, whose word I whose word I praise, in God I trust. I shall not be afraid. What can flesh do to me? Psalm 112.7 states, He is not afraid of bad news. His heart is firm, trusting in the Lord. Isaiah 41.10 states, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, I will help you, I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Hallelujah. John 14, 1 says, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. Hebrews 13, 6 says, So we can confidently say, The Lord is my helper, I will not fear. What can man do to me? Psalm 31, 14 through 15 says, But I trust in you, O Lord, I say, you are my God. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from my persecutors. Hallelujah. Psalm 91, 1 through 6. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, in my God in whom I trust. For he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in darkness, nor the destruction that stalks at the noonday. Proverbs 29.25 says, The fear of man lays a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord is safe. Psalm 9 verse 10 says, And those who know your name Put their trust in you, for you, O Lord, 
have not forsaken those who seek you. Isaiah 26, 3-4 says, You keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on you, because he trusts in you. Trust in the Lord forever, for the Lord God is an everlasting rock. Hallelujah. Mark 11.24 says the following, Therefore I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. Again, as long as it's, as long as it is according to the will of God, right? <laughs> Romans 4.20-21 says the following, No distrust made him waver concerning the promise of God but he grew strong in his faith let me start that over I'm sorry Romans 4 20 to 21 no distrust made him waver concerning the promise of God but he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised Isaiah 26 3 says this you keep him in perfect peace whose mind has stayed on you because he trusts in you. Hallelujah. Jeremiah 17, 7 through 8 says the following. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. He is like a tree planted by the waters that sends out its roots by the stream and does not fear when heat comes. For its leaves remain green and is not anxious in the year of the drought. For it does not cease to bear fruit. Psalm 28 7 says this The Lord is my strength and my shield. In him my heart trusts and I am helped. My heart exalts and with, and with my song I give thanks to him. Proverbs 28 25 says this A greedy man stirs up strife, but the one who trusts in the Lord will be enriched. John 14, 27 says this, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Romans fifteen thirteen says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound you may abound in the hope. Philippians four six through seven says the following Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving let your requests be made, be made known to God, and the peace of God, which is which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Philippians 4.19 says, And my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Hebrews 11.6 says, And without faith it is impossible to please him. For whoever would, would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. Psalm 13.5 says, But I have trusted in your steadfast love. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. Hallelujah. Psalm 62.7 says, On God rest my salvation and my glory. My mighty rock, my refuge is my God. Isaiah 12.2 says, Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and I will not be afraid, for the Lord God is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. Beautiful. Romans 10.9 says the following, Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved.
close your eyes and let's just say a little prayer. Heavenly Father, we adore you for your unfathomable wisdom and unfailing guidance. We confess that too often we rely on our own understanding rather than turning to you. Thank you for your infinite patience and your promise to guide us. Help us to continue to trust you with all our heart and to submit to you in all of our ways. May we seek your wisdom above all, trusting that you will lead us in righteousness' name. In the powerful name, the only name given from the heavens unto man unto which we can be saved, the name that is above every other name, the name of Jesus the Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen and Amen. All right, guys and girls, I love you all. Spiritual warfare is real, right? And we know that war, you get tired. War is war, whether it be spiritual or physical. And spiritual warfare, <laughs> it, manifests, it manifests itself both in the spiritual realm and in the physical realm. But that's why it's so important to understand and know the true saving knowledge of Yeshua HaMashiach and be filled with His Ruach HaKodesh, His Holy Spirit. And with the Holy Spirit guides you into all truth and the things that are yet to come. Again, I'm not making anything up. That's straight from the scriptures. So, if we have all these people that are filled with the Holy Spirit that, that are warning everyone. <laughs> I've been warning people for the last three years. Not me. The Ruach HaKodesh inside of me. So I'm not boasting in me. As I'm, I'm just a wretched sinner that's been saved by grace through faith. Grace through faith. And I, I'm, now I'm, I am a new creation. A new creation. Created to do good works for the glory of God. For his glory and my good, remembering that all things work together for the good of those who love Almighty God, that are the that are the call according to his purposes. Spiritual warfare is intense, but that's a good indicator that we are more closer than ever to that day of redemption. That their redemption, when the entire world, all creation is groaning. The entire world that have put their faith in the Son of God who came to this world, he was crucified, died. And he was buried. Why? To fulfill Bible prophecy. To fulfill that. For God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever should believe in him. Should not perish. Which means to die. But to have eternal life. There's only two places you can go to when you die. Heaven or hell. There's no purgatory, there's no second chances. Hell is a very real place, a place of eternal separation from God. A place where the warm never dies. A place where you will be conscious, okay? Which means right now, the way you are right now is the exact same way you'll be in hell, except You'll have a new body, a body that's fit for the scorching heat, the fire, the flames, and the demons that are scratching and trying to trying to trying to draw you down deeper into the pit. Because there are different levels of hell, people. There are different levels of hell. Just like in the Bema Seat of Judgment in in the heavens. 
where Yeshua himself will reward us, give us different responsibilities, different duties based on what we have done with advancing the kingdom of heaven, doing the Father's will. I don't think it's great to be in heaven, but I don't think a lot of us want to be, you know, the guy mowing the lawn in heaven, right? Wouldn't you rather be the, you know, the king's cupbearer or something? Wouldn't you rather be in charge of, like, let's say you're from the island of Aruba. Now God has given you all authority to govern Aruba according to his standards, his righteousness, his rulings, his statutes, his precepts. I'm telling you. And this all starts, by the way, from the moment that you are born again. That you've been justified, you believe in the gospel message. Because of that, he puts inside of you his, his Holy Spirit, which starts the sanctification process, right? Which is not an instantaneous download. No, 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 no. But rather a lifelong pursuit. But... Remember, he who started a good work in you will see it to completion on the day of Christ Jesus. So, I've only been born again for five years. Let's say there's a pastor who lives next to me who's been born again for 35 years, right? Just because, he, just because he's been born again for 35 years, does that mean that he's going to be judged more righteously in the Bema Seat of Judgment? No. It has to do with your heart. It has to do... Are you doing... Are you doing the Father's will? Are you... Because you've had this radical change and this new birth, right? That's why you must be born again because what is our default nature? When we're born into this world, our default nature is to go to school, make lots of money, 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 money. The love of money is the root of not 99.9% .9 of all evil. The love of money is the root of all evil. Think about that. That's a very, very strong statement. And it's true. That's where the term, just follow the money. That's where it comes from. That's why there are forensic accountants out there. Anyhow, I forgot. What, I forgot totally. What, I just had a, a mind, uh, a brain fart. I forgot what I was going to say. So, I'll just end it at that. Just remember that. Oh, I was talking about heaven and hell. Hell is not a place where you're going to meet up with your buddies and you're going to and you're going to party all day. No. Hell is a place of eternal torment. It's for eternity. You're going to be conscious. You're going to be conscious. You're going to be God is going to remember God controls your mind. Okay? He created you. He can do whatever he wants with you. He can make my heart stop right now. He can make you get into an accident tomorrow. You know? For good reasons. I mean for bad reasons. I mean he's, he's in charge of you. He's in charge of everything. He literally knows the number of hairs on your head. A lot of people don't realize that. A lot, of, a lot of people don't believe that, which I find amazing because just look at the world around you. Look at the heavens. Look at the expanse of the, of the heavens. I mean, that's all him. He created all of it. How? He spoke it into existence. His word. That's why his word is so very important. His word... This book is the instruction manual to life. It truly is. Thy word is lamp unto my feet. And the more I read it, it becomes a light unto my path. A path to where? Remember the, the narrow and difficult path that leads to eternal life that few find? That path. Without this book, this instruction manual to life, 
this instruction manual to life which is thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path guess what's gonna happen you're gonna be on that road that's wide that's easy the wide path the easy way that leads to eternal damnation and hell and many are on that road God himself said that that's scary guys think about it more people are gonna be in he in hell than they are going to be in heaven. The scriptures foretold this. God knows the beginning from the end and the end from the beginning. He knows everything. He knows your idle thoughts. He knows what you're thinking right now. He knows everything about you. He knows everything about you. He loves you. And he's not going to give up. He's not impartial. I'm sorry, he's not partial to human beings. He pours his blessings onto both the unrighteous and the righteous. But there's going to come a moment in time, and it's coming soon, because the Apostle Paul, to which much was revealed to him, because he had a personal encounter with Yeshua HaMashiach on the road to Damascus. He, a lot was revealed to him and he was the apostle to the Gentiles and he said there's a mystery and he spoke about this mystery to everyone and it was the rapture what is the rapture where is it in the Bible let me just read it and then we'll end this video Oh, and one more thing about the story about the uh, the grandmother, you know, who had a great heart, and she, she baked cookies for all the children in the neighborhood. I mean, she was known as the best old lady in the world, you know. So, so nice, and she really was. She was sweet. She was a beautiful lady. And then four blocks down a guy in the state uh, state jail penitentiary in for murder and rape he has a life sentence but he reads he reads this and he was on that road that path the easy way that leads to eternal damnation and hell but he picked up his book and because he had so much time in his hands he read the entire book and his eyes were open. That little old lady was a Jehovah's Witness, by the way. She never believed that God, she never believed in hell, first of all. She never believed that God was Jesus Christ. She never believed in the message of salvation she never believed that you, that you could be saved by faith through grace she thought it was all a workspace system and that she had to answer to the watchtower society and all their convoluted and and very misleading ways they have their own bible by the way it's called the nwt the new world translation stay away from it it's straight from the pits of hell Guess what happens? That same week, that little old lady, so sweet, so nice, God said, okay, that's it. This lady's life is over. In the morning, they found her deceased in bed. She had died peacefully in her sleep. That same week, the guy in jail was saved. He was saved by grace through faith, not by works, because he read the true 
gospel and the entire Bible, right? The entire council. He read everything. And it transformed him. He became a new creation. A week later, unfortunately, in a riot, he was stabbed to death. So now you have the grandma that died and the guy in the jail that died. Who goes to heaven and goes to hell? Based on the word of God? Very clearly it says that that lady, the next time she wakes up, she's going to be in the great white throne seat of judgment. And she will be cast into the lake of fire for eternal torment because she rejected she rejected Jesus Christ as being the son of God she rejected that he was actually crucified on a cross not on a stake she rejected she believed, she believed more in, in uh, Michael the archangel she believed more in the watchtower and all our garbage they put out. And because of that, she was offered so many opportunities. So many people knocked at her door. Hey, you know, you, you, do you know that you're in a cult? Jehovah's Witnesses is actually a cult? Please get out of it. Please. Why don't you just come to church with me? I go to a church where all they do is, they, it, it's it's a Bible-based church. They, they, they teach the Bible and that's it. No, there's no separate book about Watchtower. You don't have to stand out front of a place for four hours straight handing out things, you know, hoping that you're going to be the 100, 144,000 that are going to make it to heaven. No. Just come to church with me. Come to church with me. But no, she rejected. She rejected the good news of salvation. She even called those people crazy. She's going to hell. Guaranteed. There are no second chances. Now the man in jail who raped, murdered, he's a new creation. He's been cleansed of all his unrighteousness by the powerful blood of the Lamb. God doesn't see that anymore. All he sees on him is a beautiful white garment. And he will get a nice glorified body with no stab wounds on it or anything and he'll live an eternal life void of any sin full of peace full of joy in the most beautiful setting that you and I could ever even imagine for eternity and in the presence of his savior the one that came to this earth and died for his sin for his murder for his rape that's how our that's how forgiving that's how forgiving god is he's so so full of mercy so full of compassion he is filled with unfailing and everlasting love god is love he is so full of amazing and sweet grace to save the wretch like me. And his mercies are made new every single day for those who believe and are covered with the blood of Yeshua HaMashiach, his atoning blood, which is so powerful and divine that it clearly states in Colossians that it 
disarmed all the wicked authorities, principalities, rulers in the unseen world. He disarmed them through his atoning blood by his finished work on the cross at Calvary. He disarmed them and he made a public spectacle of them by triumphing over them through his finished work on the cross. Because of that, Almighty God exalted him. Because he died voluntarily for mankind so that we may live. Do you understand how much he was willing to do that? So he could spend eternity with us because he loves you and I so much. And if you're listening to this message and you're not saved yet, and you hear that still small voice, do not harden your hearts like Pharaoh did. There is a real struggle right now. There's a battle raging for your mind right now between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of Satan. There's a battle raging right now for my mind and for every single one of you that is watching this or will watch this in the future. It's either the kingdom or the God of Yisrael, the God of Israel, the only one and true living God. Who gave the scroll, the title deed of this world to his only begotten son, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ. Or the kingdom of Satan, the father of all eyes, who came to cheat, steal, and destroy, who will only show you half of the picture, half of the of the painting, half of the canvas. He will only show you the part of happiness, of of uh, security of peace, of power, of fame and fortune. But he won't show you the other half, oh no. He won't show you the other half of despair and destruction and suffering and death. He won't show you that because he's the father of all eyes. He wants to cheat, steal and destroy. He literally wants to kill you. And he's doing that like crazy right now. Why? Because he knows his days are numbered. He knows. He knows that very soon the father is going to say to the son, the bridegroom, hey, go and fetch your bride. And then he'll have seven years to do whatever he wants to do on this earth. And it's going to be, it's going to be, it's going to be so bad, so bad. Do not be left behind. The rapture is a real event. Look at all the movies that have been preparing for you for this. Just think about them. They're trying to desensitize you. They're trying to, to make you think that you can be a survivalist <laughs> and fight against the Antichrist and win. No. Read the book of Revelation. Read the part where they said, where all these rich people are hiding beneath these rocks and they're begging for these rocks to just fall on them so they don't have to face the wrath of God Almighty. It's going to happen, guys. So with that, just remember, With that, I want to put a blessing on you. I'll do it in Hebrew first and then in English. Just close your eyes and receive it. It's the same blessing that Aaron gave to all the Israelites. It's a very powerful blessing. It's a blessing 
from Almighty God Himself. Yevarecha Aronai Vish Merecha Yair Aronai Panabe Lecha Vikunecha Isa Aronai Panabe Lecha Vyasem Lecha Shalom Elohim bless you and keep you. Elohim shine his face upon you and be gracious to you. Elohim lift up his countenance unto you and continue to give you his shalom. In the powerful name of Hashem Yeshua HaMashiach, Amen and Amen. All right, guys. Continue to fight the good fight. Finish the race. It's almost over. We all can see the finish line. And if you are not saved, please, today is the day of salvation. Today is the day where you get on your knees, you cry out to God, and you tell Him, I cannot do this alone. <laughs> I'm not equipped to do this alone. I was never meant to do this alone. I can't do it. Nothing in life is satisfying me. The sex, the drugs, the rock and roll, nothing is satisfying me. The women are not satisfying me. Nothing is satisfying me. The only thing that satisfies me is knowing your love for me. I cannot believe that you came down to earth and, and, and died a sinner's death in my place so that I could live. Why? I don't even deserve that. That's grace. Getting something wonderful that you don't deserve. And what's mercy? Mercy is not getting what you deserve. The punishment that you deserve, you didn't get. Why? Because God poured his wrath that he was going to pour on mankind onto Jesus Christ. That's love.